Good morning, traders. It's Thursday, April 4th. Uh, we got a lot going on in the markets. I'm going to cover precious metals and uh, some shorter term trades in the precious metal space. We've got a lot of questions for it. Obviously, they're starting to finally break out. We got the miners breaking out, silver breaking out. Um, so I'm going to touch on that. Uh, I did post a funny video from a member who saw me on Cheddar TV uh, yesterday. Um, and I, I didn't post the, the link I put in the email didn't work. But uh, if you didn't see it, it's kind of funny. Take, take a listen to this here. Follow price action strictly, but I, I can see things. There we go, Chris. Slow. And if we peel the market back layer by layer, he's probably in sweatpants. Uh, the majority of stocks, if you look at the equal weighted <laughs> the good SP old uh, TV in sweatpants. Example, I was not in sweatpants, by the way. Um, but anyways, let's take a look over at the market. So this morning we are starting to see the markets move a little bit higher. SP 500 is up about a third of a percent. Nasdaq up almost half of a percent. Uh, when we look at the SP 500 daily chart, uh, obviously we've just been bouncing up this 20 day moving average um, and, and having these pauses and, and moves to the upside. We came back down to the 20 day. If we look at the 30 minute chart here, it's pretty clear that uh, I'll just flip to the SPY ETF. Um, it's pretty clear that we're really just bouncing up this. We got oversold a couple days ago. We did have panic selling in the early morning. By the time the 30 minute bar closed, the panic selling had, had fizzled off. That was the initial drop here. Um, but we had panic selling. We had the market oversold. It was at the 20 day moving average, very similar to what we had over here. Um, we've had it multiple times going back. We've had all these uh, oversold levels and, and bounces. Uh, it's funny because just the day before we are hitting new all time highs on the market. And then the very next day we have a little one day pullback and everybody jumps ship and panics. Um, and we've had that over and over again. We hit new highs. We have a pullback. Um, we've had that um, all kinds of, of times where we hit new highs, have a pullback and people just completely panic. Um, they're just super sensitive, uh, expecting these markets to collapse at any point, which we are too, but we're not going to panic over a one day pullback, especially when we're at all time highs. It's got to have some type of pause or pullback. Um, overall, the market's just starting. We had the 8.30 uh, economic data come out. Whatever that is, doesn't really matter. Either way, it's created a little bit of a blip, and we're starting to see the market push a little bit higher in pre-market uh, right now. Uh, if we take a look at uh, the NASDAQ real quick, NASDAQ is um, starting to push higher. I really do like these, these bars. Uh, the NASDAQ's a little more noisy. Let's just go to the SPY. And I really like it when we see the market uh, gap down, we see panic selling, we see a test of the pink day or pink moving average, which is the 20 day moving average. And then we start to see the market start to push higher. Uh, I like a gap down and then a rally from that. We've seen big gaps to the downside towards the 20 day, and then we tend to see it want to move higher uh, from there. So we're primed and ready for new all time highs on the markets potentially in the next bar or two, next day or two. Um, very easily, which will catch a lot of people off guard because they're betting against the market, which we can actually see with our, our sentiment chart of what people are thinking, feeling and doing with their money. We had a big wave here of a lot of panic for about two weeks of people betting on the markets falling. And we had a, a couple day pop. And now everybody's, you know, feeling like the market is about to pull sell off again, pull back and, and drop. They're betting on falling prices. We had something kind of similar to this over here. We had a bunch of deep red bars and red bars and orange bars telling us people were expecting the market to fall. We had a quick little pop and then um, it consolidated and we saw a bunch more fear. People really thinking, okay, this time it's going to go down. Um, so the fact that we had this kind of double header I feel like we've kind of got another double header, a lot of fear in the market. And when you get a lot of fear and then it works itself out, we can see these very strong rallies come out of these uh, out of these moves. So I'm really hoping we're going to see like one final big push up in the stock market going into May. Seasonality wise, um, let me just see if I have the seasonality chart pulling up here. No, uh, seasonality wise, April is a very strong month for stocks. So is May. Uh, the end of May is when you want to go away, is the saying anyway. Um, and as we can see here, the fear in the markets, when we look at it, every time we get some orange bars, just even a little bit of fear within an uptrend, the market pulls back, people panic. Um, we tend to see the market want to push higher each time. And so we'll see how that unfolds. Uh, the NASDAQ is, is fairly similar. It's got a lot more orange bars. It's a lot more chop. Uh, it's, it's losing a little bit of its uh, mojo, a little bit of its uh, momentum. 
But uh, it is trading sideways and holding its ground, and it could very easily have another strong pop. And I do believe if we have another push up in the markets, it's most likely going to be like a final push higher in AI, in big techs um, that are going to drive the NASDAQ as well. Now, let's take a quick look at NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA is flagging out sideways here. It may have a double top, but overall, it's still holding up above the 20-day. The five-day moving average is also above the 20-day. All this is a very strong sign. The last time we saw a big consolidation like this that took several weeks, uh, about a month and a half, um, you know, it had a big run out of there. The longer the consolidation, the bigger the potential rally. So there is still is energy here for another push up and um, in, that, in that space. Now, some of the things that, that worry me, if we look at Apple shares, if we look at Apple shares uh, and zoom out a bit, it's a pretty scary looking chart um, just because we're at this like really critical um, uh, neckline or whatever we want to call it, a double top, the support level. Maybe the market has a rally up going into or puts in it more of a bear flag uh, over the next month or two with the stock market. And, and that could form you know, a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. This would become a neckline. And then eventually, if it breaks that neckline, it would be a very big drop in in uh, Apple. And if Apple breaks this, this level here, it's going to have a precipitous fall, and it's going to hurt the markets big time. Um, if we take a look at Tesla, I don't really want to get into all the individual stocks, but Tesla's in a downtrend. Uh, let's just zoom out on it on the big picture here. It really is, uh, it's kind of already had this precipitous kind of breakdown kind of from this kind of neckline or this, this, these levels here. And now it's kind of bounced up. And this was, a, I think, more so a bear market rally in Tesla. Now it's working itself down. And I think it's got potential to continue to potentially sell off a little bit more to these lows. If it breaks these lows, it could have a precipitous fall back down to 100, which again, is going to really hurt the stock market. These are some heavyweight uh, players in the indexes. Um, so that's going to cause a little bit of damage if if that happens. But again, the markets are primed and ready for another bounce. So we could see all of these things bounce off these short term support levels. Nvidia break to some new highs and uh, carry the torch a little bit higher going into the sell in May go away type of mindset. And I know a ton of people keep asking, like, we're not going to go down. It's election year. The election cycles in play. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Um, it, there's no point in trying to guess and expect what it's going to do. Um, we just follow price uh, and maybe the markets keep ripping higher going into election. But uh, um, there's, we're never going to know until it's done. And then hindsight's 2020. You can either say I knew it or oh, it didn't happen this time. So don't get caught up in, in, in just thinking about all these people talking about election years and all that stuff. All right, let's take a look over at bonds real quick here. Bonds are down a little bit. Uh, let's zoom in. Um, continuing to flag down. They're just kind of out of favor. Um, bonds have been moving down, and also we've seen actually some of the defensive plays move down. Utilities are, are holding up actually in a nice little tight pattern. Uh, the ones I want to look at is XLP, which we are long. It actually moved down pretty sharp yesterday, um, 1%, which is a big move for it. But as we can see, this, this ETF usually pushes to some multi-week highs and then has a sharp pullback to the 50-day. New highs, back to the 50-day. New highs, back to the 50-day. Uh, we've had that. New highs, back to the 50-day. So hopefully we're going to find some traction here and start to see this bounce and come to life. But money's moving out of um, consumer staples. Um, they even healthcare, which is another defensive place, had a fairly sharp pullback as well. It's down to the 50-day. It's the first time this one's hit the 50-day. The, the way that um, I typically see it is when something's had a big run and it's had a very first touch of a moving average, like a big sharp, a quick drop to it, not a fade, not like a trend sideways and the moving average comes up to it, but if it has a very sharp drop to uh, one of these key moving averages for the first time, it can generally find some type of quick bounce um, uh, off that level. So maybe we bounce up to the 20-day or something, but... We are seeing money move a little bit out of these defensive plays. That money seems to be going into different defensive plays, which is more so the precious metal space. Um, if we take a look at gold, gold is kind of rocketing higher. If we take a look at our Fibonacci extensions, there's a couple of different levels we can we can pull here. Um, if we look at these levels, uh, it's hit the 618. I think it's going up to that 2350, 2360 area. Um, we could also go off where this, this rally started. Um, if I've got that tool selected 
Um, more or less, it's up to the 100% measured move based on this shorter, cleaner pattern. So gold is, has had this move. We've expected this for a while. It's a very, very strong pattern in gold. It's been keeps pushing up to these upper levels. It was flagging out underneath here, and now it's popped and broken. And it's got potential to run a little bit higher Oops. Um, going forward here. And of course, now we're starting to finally see the leverage plays around this um, unfold. So for example, if we take a look at silver, silver is starting to break out of this super noisy, ugly chart pattern. Um, if we go to the weekly chart, uh, we can kind of clean it up a little bit, although silver is just a noisy, noisy chart. Um, you know, we got these strong rallies and super strong pullbacks. Silver is a volatile beast. But if we take a look, it has um, rallied up, pulled back, rallied up. And now we're breaking through all of these pretty significant highs. So it's had a really nice move, huge volume. Everybody seems to be talking about it. And um, uh, it is a, a fresh, this is a weekly chart. So let's actually just go to the daily chart. As we can see here, it really just started to break out yesterday. And so we're only like really a day into this move. It gapped a little bit higher yesterday. Some sellers coming in today, some big volume. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that type of price action because typically we can see the markets pull back for a bit. But silver is starting to, to break out. And I know a lot of you want to trade um, uh, miners and the silver, the precious metal space. We do have, um, for, for example, uh, if you wanted to add the golden oil guy, this is the newsletter I've been running since 2008. Um, we do provide um, GDX, GLD, SILJ, SLV, um, uranium, oil, Bitcoin signals. Um, and just to cover some of those so you can see where we are, if we were to take a look at GLD, for example, the shorter term trades, uh, these white lines here I drew where these the shorter term signals to take advantage of the precious metal space are in. So we're seeing GLD up about 14% um, based on the, the golden oil guy uh, signal there. Um, we've got um, GDX, we've got down here at 2680 something. Um, it's up about 23% and it's really now just starting to break out above these highs. We've got silver. Silver also has had a really nice run. Um, it's a, a little bit different to get in the cycle here. The, the strategy is based a little bit more on cycles and swing highs, swing lows, very short term momentum. Uh, but silver um, has, has, uh, is up as well. And then the SILJ, which has been a, a pretty strong mover. Um, also got in on a cycle low for precious metals, and it is screaming higher up about 36% from the entry point. So if you do want to just even focus just on, on metals or miners and, and, and have some take advantage of the short-term moves and in, in, in the precious metal space, the Golden Oil Guy newsletter, you can go to the... Um, uh, to the members area and to your dashboard and you can actually add that subscription if you want to to focus and take advantage of these short-term moves i believe as all my interviews and, and our weekly talks here um, i believe the precious metal space has got room to run for potentially another month or two and become a, a leader which they are already are becoming a leader we've got silver miners second top from the list gold miners fourth top from the list um, pretty much all the commodity-based ETFs are in the lead. It's usually the last phase before the stock market tops, before the economy starts to kick into a recession. So this is a sweet time to play miners and precious metals for a couple of months. And then when the stock market eventually tops out, you know, you can forget about them for a while. And then when the market's put in a major bottom, 6, 8, 12 months from now or whenever that happens, then you could get back in and take advantage. Um, and of course, our ban hot list will eventually if take a trigger in in the miners when we have a new uh, setup during the new bull market phase. But um, if you want more of the nitty gritty, you can go to the Golden Oil Guy and get those shorter term signals and just focus on playing GDX or SILJ to get uh, some of what's going on here. Um, all right, so that's about it at this point. <clears throat> if we take a look at the, uh, let's just take a look at the SP500. Again, it's just continuing to truck higher. We kind of covered the sentiment. Um, we're very close to maybe one more big push to the upside, which ideally would be nice. Bring us into May um, and the miners and, and um, energy space uh, have really come to life. Um, energy stocks are just screaming higher. They are breaking out of a pretty major pattern. If we look at the weekly chart, you can see the energy space here. Um, it's got this kind of rising pattern. This is an explosive pattern. There's potential here for the energy stocks to really scream higher. They've had a big run, um, but they could still continue to scream higher. And as we know from our 
our cycle analysis based on what sectors do well, energy and precious metals come to life and lead the way just before the stock market tops out. And of course, we've got uh, OIH, which are the oil holders, XOP, which are kind of like the natural gas and oil mining stocks. Um, we've got just commodity ETF, the resource ETF in general. All of these are at the top of that list. So anyways, that's it for now. I don't think there's a whole lot more to cover. We'll see how things unfold. It looks like the market is uh, running up a little bit here in pre-market if we look at the 10-minute chart. And I think we'll uh, we'll call it there for the morning. Take care. Bye-bye.